supposed to be going to the. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. And it has the start of some educational materials. Uh, I didn't write on the tab, so I thought you could arrange things the way you liked our data collection manual. Uh, notice to all municipal employees, some of these need to be signed and returned to different folks. And so their tab, the open meeting law guide and the employee handbook and so forth. Okay. So <laughs> if you have a chance to go over that in the next two weeks, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's a, a starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in your platform for, for election, you said you wanted the, you know, the, the board of assessors to be more open and transparent, or we would appreciate and invite your ideas and suggestions as you, you go along and you see something, mm -hmm. please say so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, after every election, we have to have an election for the chair of the board. I've served for the past year and some others. Is do I hear a nomination? But what does the chair do? Basically hands out papers and, and tells everybody about everything. Um, now the chair, well, yes, essentially that's it. It has a, has a place it basically only in our meeting. Um, well, we've nominated Lee before because she's also data entry and all. Yeah. Right. So, so she knows what she's doing. Well, I have the, the larger it's, general it's, knowledge. It's yeah. kind of a, she's here and she's a, hands on a, with all the data coming in and out. So. It yeah. doesn't have any perks. No, I, I was just wondering. <laughs> so I know, I'm, I I'm all new to this. Different. So, right. I know. And I, I guess I have to second it. So, very good. Any discussion? <laughs> I no. accept the nomination. <laughs> all in favor. Means I get to see your at the end of the table. Okay. You still in favor? I'm still in favor. Okay. The eyes have it. <laughs> All right. We'll talk again about next year. Next year. Okay. So uh, first action is to review the meeting minutes from our last meeting. I give those to you. We usually read them and then initial them at the top. Oh. And ask any questions you have. I got a pen. Oh, okay. Maybe I do. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a pretty good supply. Okay. Sure. Oh, this, so, so, so I read this and I ask any questions about it. Is that the yeah. point? Okay. You weren't here, so you can't approve it. Well, but you can certainly, you're welcome to read it. Yes. Well, she was here for part of it. She was here for the, for the end of it. Yes. Yeah, you told me not to come until um, quarter six. Well, we didn't have anything particularly interesting before then. And uh, didn't want to waste your time and trying to wind up early. But I wasn't here for a couple of minutes, right? I didn't want to use that one. Oh, yeah, I have another. And Hmm? We'll send it down, Laura. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't need to pull that. No. Oh well, wait a minute. Yes, all three signed in favor, so it's accepted as read. We, I don't think we need a verbal vote. Yeah. 
All in favor of accepting the minutes as written. Or as written. Say aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. In building that, starting to build a, you know, a, a, an analysis of our job, I suppose, in a way. Handbook. Yes, yeah, a handbook. That's one of the things I, I did up. Um, the Department of Revenue has an excellent array of videos lasting from two minutes to an hour on a number of different topics. You'll see the list in there. Actually, is that the weather part of that weather group that I watched the other one? Because they had a whole bunch of other ones I could watch. Mm -hmm. Some are, yes. Yeah. 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 All will be useful. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I've put some in there and we'll add more as we come across them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second page there uh, is a set of frequently asked questions. I borrowed it from Foxborough and edited it some to be appropriate to Conway in the fiscal year. They're very good general questions that folks often ask us. So it's it's good to be prepared with the answer and, and have a basic understanding of the uh, situation being inquired about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then you had seen our data collection manual anyway. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the town employee handbook. All kinds of goodies. Well, this is what you gave me one other time, this handbook. Did I? Yeah. I think so about the town and conditions and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have a, you have a copy right there and it'll be handy when you need it and mm -hmm. when we get ready to go out on site visits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wonder if the owl caught that and just blew it apart. <laughs> Top. Okay, next we have mm -hmm. new mail and pay bills. Well, the new mail includes the latest deeds and the latest building permits. So if you'd like to have a look at them, then you can switch over. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, this is the one that just sold, huh? Mm -hmm. The Mariama one? Yeah. Uh-huh. We couldn't believe the price mm -hmm. on that or on the Mirbergen one. They were both way outside the. So, and what am I supposed to do? Um, just Well, these are to read and be aware. We have to look at these, analyze them and determine if they were indeed a true market value. Now, is it that one where the buyer is from Fairfield, Connecticut? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That one may be affected by the fact that the buyer is from a much higher market than ours is. And in Fairfield, what he would have got for 300,000 would have been a lot less than here. Um, in our sales verification form. We ask that very question. And they'll see what the buyer's response is to that. And that helps us determine whether or not that's an arm's length sale that truly reflects, reflects the Conway market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello? Somebody just signed it. 
Oh, okay. Very good. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for there in the deed. Um, we can I compare them to the map to make sure the descriptions are the same and all. And uh, we glean what information we can from that in our verification forms that are sent to both the buyer and the seller. So what are we doing with this is deciding these these are again for our review the building inspector sends us copies of all permits that are issued. We realize that there's a great deal deal more going on than that usually at any given time, but at any rate, these give us a heads up to be aware that these changes are happening at these properties. The big one here right now is Owen Wormser's house on Shelburne Falls Road just past the Jackmans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's really going great guns on it, apparently. Uh, I think there's a plumbing order in there and something else. I know he had planned to build quickly. So this also indicates to us it's a good time to pop up there and look at the framing. We went up January 1st and saw just a, sound, just a, seller, just a seller. Covered. Right. Wasn't even tapped. Yeah, was, was it fully capped yeah. with the framing? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they get entered into the computer, mm -hmm. into each, each parcel's okay. in, mm -hmm. information, yeah. And they tell us, sometimes they tell us the estimated cost of the job, but they don't always put it on there. Mm -hmm. The contractor mm -hmm. doesn't always put it on there. But it's still a heads up to us that something's going on there, yeah. Here are two sales verification forms that we've received back. One is from uh, Lorna Rose for the post office, which was transferred into her name alone uh, a month or so ago. We know that was not an arm's length sale, obviously, but we did send her the form and find out a little bit more about the place physically. That transferred to them? Yes. Oh. Yes, from Sydney and Margaret's the estates. Yeah. Oh. To her alone. It's always been owned by St. Peter. Right, up I, until now. Oh, I did. I thought it was the town. Oh, oh no. no. no he, building. he bought it 40, 50 years ago. Well, at least. Yeah, because I've been here 48. We moved here, so yeah. that's 52 years ago. Yeah. So it's always been. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And he'd been the. Oh, am I supposed to sign that or not? I don't know. Initially, if you'd like, yes. Yeah. Okay. How long was he? When did, do you know, have any idea, feeling as to when he became the postmaster? He was That's postmaster. all I ever knew. He yeah. Was postmaster. Yeah. A weekend. Yeah. That's all I gave quite a long run. Yeah. Yeah. This one is for a camp over off Williamsburg Road. And this one really got the bells ringing in Conway because it said it has sold for $2.1 million. Well, it turns out that the sale, once we got the look that the deed included several downtown Northampton properties <laughs> that were owned by the same people, but it didn't show up that way. It showed it the Conway report just said Conway, whatever number Williamsburg Road, $2.1 million. Yeah. And they were hopping about that all over town, but it was kind of fun when I found out why. But he says it was a private sale and it was off the market when he found it and negotiated for it. So that's quite an interesting factor as well. I that's think he paid 168 for it. Listed it as, as an sale. I listed it, well, no, because it's a multi-parcel sale. Anyways, that throws it out of our, when, when, yeah, when I sold that, yeah. Oh, 
this is actually an, an housing problem. It's a it's a camp. Oh, on a pond. Oh, yeah. Well, it's got a tank tank. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it was only ever used summers and it's right beside the pond. Hmm. New mail and pay bills. Well, pay bills. We have the bill from Cartographic uh, tech, uh, CAI Technologies, our mapping engineers, for the $500 to install the new um, advanced queries feature module that we've ordered. And he is going to mill, bill more of it in fiscal 2009 because we're getting low on money. But, but it may be possible to use ARPA. Cartographic has sent us a notice also that many communities are using their ARPA funds for GIS initiatives that qualifies. So we may possibly look at that, but right at the moment, I have to sign the front one. And usually we have, we all initial that one to indicate that yes, we've seen it, no paid it. No. Okay. So just on the corner still. Perfect. Okay. And that can go to Mike. Um, speaking of that. There's also the possibility of using ARPA funds to buy the tablet and collection section of the Tyler programming, which is a, a you know tablet that you take out. It um, has a complete data collection window on it. It has a laser built into it that measures the exterior of the building mm -hmm. and the you know the uh, floor height, everything you might want. You can put in all the details. You can take the pictures, um, write any notes that you would like. It sends it back and loads it in. And that will save hours. Not only hours, but it takes away from any interpretation errors. Yes. You know, when you're scribbling notes down right. as you're going. And can then... I still read them next week? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Are yeah. you going to remember what you were thinking of? A week or two ago. So yep. we could use that money for that. I think so. So I've sent another urgent request for a quote on that module. You didn't give you a quote. Right? Not yet. Okay. No. I called our local uh, salesperson. He's a regional rep. And so left him a message. What's that tablet cost that's going to go with the Tyler? Oh, I don't know. know. But we have to buy theirs because it's fully programmed well, to what? Yeah, I mean, it's fully programmed with all of the collection data mm -hmm. and all that, and uh, it will talk automatically right. to the Tyler program here. Right. Yeah. So I don't know what uh, name brand it is yet or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They'll tell me, I'm sure. So you can get that for the quote? Yes. For fiscal this year or next year? Uh, ARPA doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, no. Thank goodness. That's one nice thing. Cover it so they look into something. We don't have it. We don't have that much. We don't have that much. No. We care, we care all of it. No, we don't. Uh, okay. But there is a special town meeting coming up, so if it's something that ARPA won't cover, it isn't right. Quote that you and put on we, the special town meeting in November. We did absolutely want. We could do. This is the end of the year's 
budget. I didn't print the whole year out. And just the last couple of months worth. And the projection after paying stipends and our wages the rest of June. Uh, although I didn't put in the end of June. We'll still be a week, just over a week there. So we're getting um, the three left columns are all salary and wages and stipends. They are a little mini department by themselves. And within that department, we have 26% um, left. So we're fine there. The other columns off to the right, the less populated ones are our general expenses, including meetings, postage, uh, programs, office supplies, mapping, all of that. And we're right down there. So after we buy our stamps and so forth, we're, we're gonna be coming out pretty tight. So I'm gonna get $66, is that what it's saying? Yeah, it's $800 for a half year. And I figured you were elected on the 15th, so it's a half a month, so. I'm just, I'm just, I have no idea. I was just wondering. <laughs> That'll be the stipend for this portion of the year. Uh, come fall, it'll be the same as us. We we'll each will have 800. So that's how we're looking financially at the moment, which is good. We haven't gone over in any, in any overall category. These we're able to lump together into one sum. And so if you go over in one little one, and you know, don't in the other, your, your bottom line is the total. It's good for us to know which column here may have gone over because that helps us to predict for next year. Yeah, so we asked him for a, for that, ARPA funds. There's also a, and an internal memo from Department of Revenue regarding Chris Wilcox's um, presentation. And, you know, and his idea, I don't know what program they use when he was back in Tewksbury, but he got an iPad and started integrating it with the program they had. And now the Department of Revenue is really backing this idea very, very much. And um, they feel that it's exactly what we said earlier, saving time, improving accuracy, and worthwhile for any town that can possibly do it. Yeah. Now, another piece of mail we had was a hearing officer notice from um, National Grid and Verizon that that uh, class action suit. And okay, it's persist. Booked for a, an initial hearing on June, t uh, no, petitions must be received by June 10th. The actual first hearing. Is going to be on the site. It's basically the cable company is going after Verizon and Eversource because of the restrictions on that one on that one new pole mm -hmm. that was put up for solar array. Mm -hmm. They put a restriction on how many lines can come off of that pole. And because of the solar array, it's pretty full. It's pretty full. Yes. And the cable company wants to add on and they can't. So now they're Soon, ever source. CRC and Communications, yes, doing business as Otelco versus Mass Electric doing doing business as National Grid of Verizon and the and Verizon. Yeah, so those are the parties involved. We're simply notified about it. Um, let's see, we have mileage reimbursements. We signed that one when Lori went out. I'm not the head of the department. Oh, well, yeah, sure. I'd like to 
sure to add your initials there or whatever. When we use our own vehicles, we would get 58 and a half cents a mile. That's the federal rate. Hmm? Yes. Oh, is that yeah. the same thing? No, this is no. Lori's. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here we go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. The state's figures on the centrally valued telephone accounts with MCI and Verizon came out today. And not much change. Um, MCI's total figure is going to be 151,600. Verizon's will be 473.7. And for new growth, we have the magnificent sums. From MCI, we get $1,800 in new growth and 200 from Verizon. So that's not going to change the tax rate any, but I guess it's better than zeros. These are, this is a category that is valued by the state using specialty appraisers who oh. know this industry. And because the systems are statewide, mm -hmm. they, uh, they do it for the entire state, break it down by town and send us the figures to use. Yeah, so you have no, we have no say in it anyways. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. Now let's see. New mail pay bills. All right. Recent sales. We look at them and billing permits. Current listings. We have two new two listings months. since last time. Up on Bond Street and on Whateley Road, uh, the house that was built by Heather. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Heather True Love. That's going on. Now. It's on the market. Yes. For sale by owner. Yes. For what? Oh. For sale by owner. For sale by owner, five hundred and fifty-nine thousand. Good luck with that. Not a lot of land with it. Uh, pretty view, kind of out over Pumpkin Hollow there a little bit. He doesn't have a couple acres with that. Yeah, but I mean, it for five hundred and fifty thousand, you'd expect four or six acres, maybe. Oh, look at this house. The house is pretty good size. Oh, yes, right? it is. And when you yeah. look at what your space is sold for, and it's a fraction of the size. Oh, I know. It's true. But that was a It was a modular, yes. It, was, it wasn't a stick bill. Nope. Well, they've been on four trucks. They arrived December 31st, and she didn't have them loan, offload any until after January 1st. So as of January 1st, she was billed only for a foundation. Oh. Well, her house. If the company would actually do that. Yeah, well, it was the holiday, I guess. And mm -hmm. yeah, maybe she probably told them ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. The guys just aren't going out. Yeah. We have three new motor vehicle excise applications, uh, one from Honda, one from Matthew Derry up on Hoosick Road, and one from Pat Storing on Main Poland Road, all of which came in in good order with all of their supporting documentation. So, and Lori's figured up the certificate and the um, summary, so we're good here. I'd like to look at these first, you can see what has to be sent in with it. They have to have, we have to have proof. Oh, this is for abatements of uh, motor vehicles. Did they sell them probably? Is that it? Usually, Usually sold traded. or traded, traded right. in. Yeah. yeah. 
might be given to a kid, you know, one of their children. Or go for scrap. Go for scrap, oh. yes. Sometimes we get a lemon law mm -hmm. in, yeah. And they have to provide proof that the registration has been canceled. Mm -hmm. And then we can um, abate based on that. And that's all order. That's in order, so you can sign down there in the lower right if you like. Okay. I'll start signing these. You can start signing that. And Where'd you have to actually sign that? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. On the, oh. where it says just above there. Yeah. Oh, just oh, sign right yes. there. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a summary of the three. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That goes for the tax question. Mm -hmm. The accountant, he doesn't want the whole uh, I see. The applications stay with us. The certificates and the summaries go across the street. We do about Hundred of these a year, maybe hundred twenty-five depends. Yep. We're in June and we've done fifty-nine. So I got six months to go. On. Yeah. Oh, I didn't sign that one. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. There's that one. Sign up. Oh, all three? Or yes, all three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, next is review and sign any new chapter liens. We have none. Ross is that one right now. Uh, we do have a few other uh, matters though to consider. Our tax collection system is called QDS. And it now has the ability for assessors to enter abatements and the amount that is abated and therefore refunded on someone's taxes, rather than us sending the information like this with a summary and a certificate over to Jan, uh -huh. and then they put it in. Oh. The system has the ability for us to put it in here on this side of the street. And I guess we're going to have a training session tomorrow morning. Yes, Jan's going to come over and um, Show us how it works. It would be Laurie's department, really, as far as data entry is concerned. So she's going to look over, and I'm, I'm going to too, just to see about it. Uh, no, it would also enable us to view the tax bill information, which might save some unnecessary inquiries, you know, between us and them. I don't know. I don't want to go interpreting any of their information to a property owner. I don't want to be in that position. But we will be able to tell if it's been paid or not. True. 
with the abate motor vehicle excise abatements, it has to have been paid, the bill does, before we can abate it. Mm -hmm. Now we have to call or send a note over and ask if it's been paid in full. Uh, this way we'd be able to see. Mm -hmm. And that that is a nice feature. It's yeah. a time saver. Yeah, it's a time saver, yeah. And makes it more convenient because we're not always asking when they're in the office. Yeah. yeah. So that's on for tomorrow morning. Uh, I spent an hour and a half today doing a deposition with two attorneys. That was- That happened today. That was a first. What was that for? Um, Priscilla Lynch, Priscilla and Patrick bought Martha Powick's house. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, just below the Thompson Road intersection. Oh, on the left, there are two old farmhouses that look very much alike. On the, right. the old field farmhouses. Coming from our house to be on the right. That's right. I'm coming from our, right. yeah, your house. Yes. yes just yes. after Thompson Road is a barn. Yes. And then, of course, it was your dad's house. Yes. But across the road, there was another house. Yes. There are two old farmhouses that basically look so, almost exactly, exactly alike in construction. Right. And the nearer one to you right. was owned by Martha Powell. Right. And she and her family had been in Conway for, oh gosh, I think 50 years at least, and owned that. They owned a piece, they owned several pieces. Um, the piece that the McLaurins built on and that Grace DeSoto built on oh. over on the other side there below your dad's house. Mm -hmm. Uh, the piece of land that goes out and around your, yep, yeah. yeah. and plus the barn 80, piece. 80, 80 acres, no, how many acres? Well, 10 acres. Well, 10 right. acres on that piece, yes, yeah. 10 yeah. point something. Yeah. Yeah. And the piece with the barn is about uh, 1.4 acres, I think. Mm -hmm. That's a separate parcel. Oh, okay. So Martha owned all three of those. And she had a mortgage through Wells Fargo. Well, I think at the end of her life, whatever, for whatever reason, by the time she had passed away, they were in arrears mm -hmm. and Wells Fargo did a foreclosure on her properties and auctioned them. And Priscilla and Patrick bid at the auction in good faith, wanting all three properties. The only problem was when we got to reading the deed very carefully after the deed came in here, we realized they didn't sell. They didn't. They didn't own. They the didn't property. own. Oh, they the didn't have a mortgage on the property. On the ten acre piece, she never mortgaged it with her other two parcels, so she still owned it free and clear. Huh? Yeah. They, I think, must have have asked Jan for. Municipal lien certificates for the Powell properties mm. because she gave them all three, not realizing that one was out of it. And at that time, I didn't realize one parcel was out of the loop either. So, what it comes down to is a legal action to settle this. And the two attorneys today, one was representing the Lynches, and another was representing the title company. I thought somewhat. That property went to the state at one point. No, none of that has. It didn't. There's no state property near there. No. Because they were doing some trails in there. The state was going in. I thought that that was just what I had. Oh. Had gone. I don't know unless they were doing it through Martha. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because I had thought some of the she had signed it over to the state. That was my understanding. But I haven't I seen a deed to that effect. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was what was happening. Here's the one map of it. That was what was happening today. These are the, mm -hmm. the blue ones are the ones that Lynch's did get, and they were very disappointed that they did not get the large piece. That had been an important part of their and they thought plans. they were buying it at the auction at that price. Well, they paid for it. They paid for it. They, they paid, paid for it. what they they right they paid they, a price that they believed was for all three right. properties. Right. I think it was hundred fifty four thousand. The house was in terrible condition. Yeah. But um, this goes with that. But you yeah. didn't get it. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. 
and that made it very difficult. So that was today's big adventure. <laughs> it was an interesting process. It was cordial. It was by Zoom. So the two attorneys and the court reporter and I were all on it. Yep, never done anything like that. Um, we're also trying to sort out uh, the third little question, I guess, on Jones Corner Road. Back in 2016, they had come in to talk about their three parcels and looking at the taxes that were continually rising on them. And we talked about a couple of things. They weren't just for student chapter enrollment. I did say, but the only other way to reduce it is to make it all into one piece. And then some of the value of the, the two abutting parcels will be reduced because they'll come in at a different place in the land schedule. And we talked about how to do that. I said, you have to have a survey done that makes all three pieces into one parcel. The point to remember is that the three parcels no longer exist after that survey has been recorded. It's been completely redefined as one parcel. In order to see three parcels again, you'd have to resurvey it as three. So that was all good news and so forth. They did it. Uh, we were able to reduce the values as, of the abutting parcels because they were now back land and um, a further back land, I should say. And in 2020, they were doing some estate planning and their attorney. I don't know how it happened, but their attorney wrote up three separate deeds, one for each parcel. And whether the, when they did the survey, there was no new deed saying that these three had been made into one. There doesn't have to be. The oh. survey itself is legal notification to assessors, to anybody who wants to know that this is a new parcel, this is the new legal so description So does that have to be filed with the registry of deeds? Oh, yes. Oh, and it was? In, oh, yes. In the, okay. the attorney didn't pick up on it. It's not a common occurrence, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. And in a title search, you should look in the plan book too, mm -hmm. up there to see if a new survey has been recorded in that owner's name. So they had trouble explaining it to their, their attorney and I tried to on the phone and uh, that didn't work out. I sent an email and that didn't work out. Nothing had been happening. And it doesn't cause a problem here really because we're billing it as one piece, which is what it is. But as far as their estate planning is concerned, it confounds things a little bit. So they wanted help sorting it out. So I finally wrote a summary of what had happened and why the land's value decreased by making into the one parcel. I think that was some of what the attorney didn't understand. Um, and so How I much said, land are they done. talking about with the three parcels? Let's see, 19 plus three plus 10, 40 acres, something like that. Mm -hmm over yep um it wraps around what used to be irene and bob's house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comes out on the road on both sides mm -hmm. yep yep so these are that's my letter to them and they hope to get it to the their attorney pretty quickly to uh you're welcome to look at it to see if he could sort it out. But uh, as I say, it doesn't cause any changes here or anything like that. Until that water will apply for a building permit. Oh, uh, yes. If, when they pass away and it gets put, and then they go to apply for a building permit. Yeah. All bets are off, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
they couldn't do it on just one of the old lots. Hmm. And there's already a house on the, the large lot. So that by our zoning bylaws, there could be a second house and then if it, it was attached. Right. And if they wanted to separate it at all again, that would be real screwy. No, they just have to have a new survey and it could make a new sublot any size they wanted it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the taxes change according to right. the bonds. Right. Yep. Yep. So uh, that's what's happening with that one. Um, I've also been working on the Ashfield line below Chapel Falls. We have several little parts where the Ashfield property comes into Conway a little bit. We've known about them. They're just little, I say, big enough to put a picnic blanket on. And that's about it. Um, and I have been able to work up the ownerships now so that we can begin for fiscal 23, billing the right people for their each. There are five little tiny pieces. They are actually five separate owners. So we'll be able to build them properly. Uh, for those tiny pieces, some of them are going to be a $3 bill, probably. Something ridiculous like that. But we've tracked it down. And I think that solved one of our owner unknowns as well. In the course of mapping, sometimes they came across a parcel they just couldn't determine who was the owner. And back in the late 80s, when the maps were being created, they came to town. They looked at everything that was reported in Greenfield. They came to town. They asked people to bring in anything they had, their own deeds, their own information. Um, people came and looked at their maps as they were being done. Uh, they said, no, that's not right. And the guy would say, OK, let's go talk to your neighbor. Two of us in the neighbor. And we'll Try and figure out exactly where it is. They used family Bibles. They used all kinds of things to determine ownership deeds, of course, probate records. And there were still some that couldn't be specifically identified. So as there is a little bit of time, I kick back into one of those and go digging and try and solve a mystery in order to get it back on the tax rolls. We only have one large one which is right north of Chapel Falls Brook. And it goes in along the brook and then wraps around on the west side and goes up the Asheville town line. And that one has been, that one's been tricky. It's been hard to determine where it's at. So we'll get back to that one. But yeah. I think the state would like to own it. Maybe if someone will donate it. Yeah. So let's see. What other business do we have? Are there any questions you'd like to ask now? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure right now. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. We hit you with a lot today. Yeah. And it probably would be good to write down things as you read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just getting to know what's mm -hmm. expected and what to do. And yeah, we'll talk about going out on site visits. Um, in another week, a couple of weeks, probably. Uh, would you be available during the week? For an hour, a couple of hours in the afternoon? Yeah, I'm available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we, we always pre-schedule it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we would talk about it on a Wednesday night and say, okay, it looks like maybe we go out that day. Mm -hmm. And I would make appointments accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Any news? You're in, things no, we've heard. I whether uh, talked to Tim the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> and he does have a buy sell agreement that a transfer should be in July. For the uh, Bortons? Bortons. Bortons, end of July. We'll watch for that. Yeah. That's, that's, what, he, that's what he said. Right. I've heard it fall, it fall on through. Right. Things, but no, it doesn't. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm happy for them. I've spoken to the buyers. Ah. That mean? Well, I spoke to her, the wife. Lovely. Okay. Well, I guess my question would be, 
I came in about my property. Yeah. And did you find out anything? Well, I pulled up some more information um, with regard to barns, but the, the value on your barn changed primarily because of the uh, town multiplier of 0.94 being removed for 22 weeks. That brought the value up. And we had agreed on what the descriptions of the different components of it are, the three sections of your barn garage. Mm -hmm. And they're correctly described and measured. Mm -hmm. And that's where they come in. So, I mean, I guess I wasn't quite, I don't understand why mine would go up 13% and everybody's else didn't. I've been looking at several of them. I haven't been all finished yet. Yeah, I've been having to get ready for this deposition and a few other things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because they had to receive any correspondence that I had had with any of the parties. So that meant going back to 2018 mm -hmm. and digging through and finding all that and getting it off to them. So, yeah. Right. And then uh, Lori had sent me the information and made us the nice. I didn't send that to you. I sent it to Lee more, oh, you as, gave it to me. more as an in house reference, not complete. And she forwarded it to you. you right. Gave it to and me. right. You got it too soon. Oh, okay. Basically. All right. So that wasn't very accurate. Well, as to the that's, pricing of the we're going to just put that aside because, as Lori said, I hadn't checked it yet. Uh huh. So I would say it has no bearing right now because it won't until I've checked it and we make sure we have the correct figures. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think we heard from a reliable source that the Barker House will probably be going on the market since, since David has died badly. But there's no proof of that yet. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Wait and see. Who's the Barker House? South Park. A little stone house down on South Park. Where Roaring Brook comes down oh, okay. past the waterworks and then yeah, turns yeah, yeah, sharp. Yeah. That big stone looking house in that corner. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. That was owned by the Barkers from 1906, I think. That was the year the building was built. House was built. Yeah. Um, Janet Ryan was a barker. Do you know Janet? Singer. She always sings at festival and has been a music teacher at the grammar school for a number of years now. Yeah. At any rate. Um, so that will be something to watch for. Um, the party that was supposed to be is going to be held. They pushed it off till the fall. Yeah. Uh, town employee get together. Oh, because yes. I sent you an email yeah. saying I couldn't make it. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, they, they they went and pushed that off to fall. Oh, so uh, we're good there. Anything else you can think of, Lori? Yeah. Um, you might have to go see Jan to fill out paperwork. Yeah. I left so a note. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah you sent me a note. That. Yeah. Yep. Gave me a note to see Jan. Yeah. Right. She's usually there Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Stop for and there are a couple of other notes in there for things that need to be signed and returned after you've read them. <laughs> yeah. The don't think anything else we have going on with any other committees or, or boards. Move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, yes. All right. Adjourn. Mm -hmm. Six thirteen. One mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm.